Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. Live <laughs> from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny San Diego, California. 125 million broadcast home strong, thanks to Biz TV. Bloomberg Television, even in Mexico. Hola. Uh, American Life Network, and of course on radio, we are simulcast as well. TV and radio at the same time. Biz Talk Radio Network, iHeart Radio, and American Forces Radio Network in 175 countries and all the ships at sea. Can I bring one thing up before we start? Greg Todoroff, our executive producer, as well as uh, Mike Costa. Did I see James East in the, pro in the, in the opening credits, or the opening uh, thing that says, my, my yes. other shirts at your mother's? <laughs> It's <laughs> your, mo your mom's house. It's your mom's house. This reminds me of celebrity. My, that's yeah. what your mother said, Alex. Yes. <laughs> My other shirt's at your mom's house. Uh, does, does, who gave you that shirt? Um, I don't remember. I remember I gave shirts to the band one time. Uh, hey, great to have you along. Guess who's here? Shep Hyken. And we're running a little bit late on him. And I feel horrible. But Shep Hyken wrote two books. What are the books? I'll be back. You know, somebody needs to write a book on Celebrity Jeopardy. Uh, and, of course, the convenience revolution. Shep Hyken and I met uh, through, um, through a, uh, a keynote speaking. Our mutual friend, Josh Linkner. Uh, Shep is a well-known keynote speaker, as well as the chief amazement officer for Shepard Presentations. But before we start, Shep, you are, uh, you know, the more, ref the more research we do here at the studio on you, buddy, we find out you are, you are a music aficionado. As evidenced by all the guitars tonight. So, what is your favorite music that you like to play, buddy? Uh, you know, I think aficionado is a pretty strong word. But uh, <laughs> hey, how about uh, you know? I love I love Clapton, uh, John Mayer, Allman Brothers, Santana. Uh, maybe it's a little classic. Maybe it's a little somewhat new. But I like that kind of a, a you know, vibe. You know, you know that, so, nothing super hard rock. So you know, I love your band. I well, love I, your I band. appreciate it. Well, James East here I know. Uh, has played with Eric Clapton. Yeah, I uh, know. His brother, brother currently brother. tours Eric Clapton. Brian Jordan here. Uh, listens to Eric Clapton and has <laughs> Brian Jordan actually played with Dave Matthews, James Brown, and Lauren Hill, and of course uh, uh, Josie and the Pussycats way back in the day. So, uh, very and, good. And by the way, you should know I also I played with John Mayer probably five times in the last three months. How with uh, his album? No, on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> I, I put on YouTube and I play along with, with him on YouTube. It's I was a lot of say, fun. It was I played with him yesterday. Wow. <laughs> Hey, let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, the fact that, that customers are getting smarter and smarter. You and I talked about this a couple of years ago when we first met. But man, talk about the speed of light with uh, instant gratification, augmented reality, uh, everything else that's going on in, in marketing. Talk about the consumer uh, and, and what businesses have to do to sort of keep up, so to speak. Sure, and you talk about businesses, whether it's B two B or B two C. Our customers are smarter than ever because they now. And I said this, by the way, not just two or three years ago. My number one prediction every year that I make in my 10 predictions at the beginning of the year is customers are going to be smarter this year than they were last year. Right. They compare the experience they have with not uh, uh, with you, not to a direct competitor, but to the best company that they've done business with. That could be Amazon. It could be Chick-fil-A. It could be right. Costco, uh, any of these brands that are known for service. And even if you're in B2B, recognize your customer, who's that buyer, purchaser, they are they're a consumer as well and you're getting compared to those great experiences so, do you think do you think chef the customer yep. service is going to go on the wayside with automation and and augmented reality and ai and everything else no well i think it's actually going to get better because that's part of the service experience uh, we do our research every year and the younger generations gen z's and millennials would rather go digital first before they make a phone call that said uh, here's what's happening today with, uh, you know, the whole chat GPT and the generative AI and everything that's happening. We did a study. I, I did this in, in conjunction with Captura, which is a Gartner research company. We asked a bunch of call center and support center, call center. That's, that's so last decade. Sure. Support center, because so much of it's Do they not still a call have call anymore. centers? We, uh, first well, of all, you still talk to people on the phone, but it's the customer support department. And yeah. it's text, it's chat GPT, you know, AI infused bots. Sometimes it's direct connections, messaging, even an email. But here's, here's where, where I'm going with this. We asked them, because of this AI, 
Are you decreasing your employees? Are you increasing employees? What are you doing? Only 9% said they were decreasing due to AI. 60 yeah. some odd percent say they were increasing the employees they have on the customer support floor, and the rest are just remaining flat. That's amazing that over 60 percent. Now I'll be interested to see what that number is next year. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is the amount of time agents are taking with customers is getting longer because all of the easy stuff is being handled digitally. Hey, did you send my order out? When's it going to arrive? Uh, what's my bank balance? You know, did you receive my payment? Sure. All those can be answered digitally. You don't have to wait on hold. You don't have to give your mother's social security number and your firstborn child's middle name to get that answer. You can now well, just do it so easily. Shep, you were also the one who said that AI is getting less expensive. Uh, it is. So talk about that, because I think that's one of the misnomers for businesses. They think AI is, is cost prohibitive, and it's not. Right, well, just a few years ago, if you look at like Watson, IBM's AI uh, solution, it would cost a fortune. Small businesses can't afford it. But I just talked to somebody today that has a great solution that they're rolling out to all kinds of businesses that literally will cost $100 a month, and that's thousands of interactions with customers for that price, which means the smallest companies can now afford to go digital if they wanted to. And when I say digital, I'm talking about that chat GPT mm -hmm. type solution. Uh, Shep Hyken's with us. Shep Hyken, of course, is the Chief Amazement Officer of Shepherd Presentations. He's also a, a, a renowned keynote speaker and an author of several books. I've got to ask you about the customer experience. What do you think right now versus last year, versus five years, versus 10 years ago is the most important piece of the customer experience? Is it immediacy? Is it velocity? Is it just uh, good old fashioned TLC? Is it being listened to or is it all the above perhaps? Well, part of it's all of the above, but if you only gave me a choice of a couple of different ideas, I would say, number one, reduce all the friction you can. Uh, waiting on hold is friction, so that includes speed to resolution. So I think if you start to reduce friction, do it fast, and recognize that customer service has not changed in 50 years, and it won't change for another 50 years, as far as customer has a problem, issue, question, they want it resolved, and they want to be happy at the end. The stuff in the middle will change but the beginning and the end remains the same. Shep, is, uh, is, is uh, in your opinion, um, with respect to uh, the human touch for customers versus automation, is that killing the experience? And, and, and secondly, uh, are there uh, metrics that you would give a big business that apply to all businesses or are they different for small businesses? Well, there, uh, every business could have different metrics that are important to them. But the, to answer the first question, did video kill the radio star? Yeah, right. The answer is no. <laughs> so AI and chat GPT and generative AI and all these solutions that are digital are not going to kill the live human interaction. Because at the end of the day, if I can get my questions answered quickly and do it digitally and you make it easy for me, I'm going to love you and stay with you. But as soon as I have any friction and there's a problem, if you can seamlessly connect me to the right person to get my answer resolved, that person now has the chance to even build a stronger relationship with me. So I think when you put them in tandem, yeah. the balance is there. You've just got to find that balance. Because the reason I bring up those two questions in tandem, as, as you as you use your parlance, is because, look, you go to a dry cleaner, you go to a deli, you go to a consultant or your attorney, you're going to have a human touch. You yep. try to call up your bank, and it's going to take you 16 minutes, or FedEx, or or any Direct TV. Direct TV. <laughs> Thank you. Asking for a friend <laughs> to, 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 to get that. So, but so the point is, is that at some point, that human touch has to happen every once in a while, and, and I think it's important. I think the velocity is also important. Let me switch gears before I let you out of here. Uh, talk about the keynote speaking business. Um, yeah. uh, we're, are we back in business now post COVID? Oh yeah, is it, is it yeah. We've been back. We've been yeah. back. It's strong. People want to get together. They recognize the value of an in-person meeting. There's still a place for the online, you know, virtual Zoom type meetings or mm -hmm. Microsoft Teams type meetings. And I still do some of those. Uh, but the uh, I'm basically back to almost a full schedule as I was prior to COVID. You know, what's interesting is I'm getting booked over and over again for individual companies of 20 to 100 people to go to their location, give them their keynote on negotiation or time management, or time efficiency, and then stay with them for a half a day. So I can tell yeah. you, the fees are like double from what they were 
uh, from back in the you know the Chase deal and everything pre-COVID, which which I, I think is amazing. So I, I, I have to say I'm glad to hear that. We talked to Troy Hazard on, on, a, on a regular basis. And yep, some other Troy knows. In your game, and it's getting back there. Shep, I uh, can't wait to hear from you again. You need to get you here on a regular basis. We need to get you here in San Diego so you can come and hang out with the band and play on stage. Yeah, I want to do that. Wanna, and there's my Santana sound. There you All go. right. I know you need it, right? There you go. Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. More Big Biz coming up. Stand by.